أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين المجتبى من النبيين سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى وعلى عترته وعلى من هاجر معه وعلى من نصره Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته um, Sorry today we began at maybe a few minutes um, later and that had to do with some technical issues here but Alhamdulillah we're on our way now we will uh, join hands and hearts and continue this um, excursion, as it were, into the history of those who the Qur'an, Allah's accurate words, defines them as Bani Israel. Remember, in our attempt to understand Bani Israel, we say that they were the Muslims who flunked Iman, another way of understanding them. These are the people that belong to Allah's Prophet in one sense and did not belong to him in many other senses. And uh, if you look around in today's world, you'll see that this description of Bani Israel includes many others who are not technically Bani Israel. So we got to ayah number 249 in Surah Al-Baqarah. And before I um, begin uh, my uh, human attempt at explaining the meanings of this ayah and onwards, I'd like to make a quick remark that Alhamdulillah, finally, the um, Ascendant Quran translation the copies have reached Brother Afif today. I just got word of it within the past 20 minutes. So inshallah, maybe next time we can have a copy of it on camera here as we are explaining uh, the meanings of these ayat in Allah's enlightening book. So A number 249 begins with Falamma Fasala Talutu Bil Junudi Kala in Allah Mubitali Kum Binahar. And so when Talut, this is the person, remember in the previous explanations of the previous few ayat, uh, two or three ayat, we were speaking about this argument. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reproducing for us a fact in history and a fact of life in which the elites, al-malak min bani Israel, those who have the swaying power to fill the public's mind with their propaganda, with their inaccurate information, with their deviations, etc. So they act as if everything has to refer to them. The prophet sort of is someone they consult with almost. Anyways, this back and forth resulted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending for them, sending to them Talut. Talut now assumes his military responsibility. His duty now is to command those who are willing from Bani Israel to do their military duty. Here, this ayah begins by concentrating our attention on the movement now. فَلَمَّا 
فصل طالوت بالجنود when طالوت um, took off with the troops remember when we say these in English we sort of feel that some of the meaning uh, is not captured but anyways to fill you in as much as we can and the word fasala is a distinction without a differentiation the, the word fasal the noun fasala is the verb fasal is the noun we say uh, the, the way it's used in uh, in the standard and classical usage of the Arabic language, we say a classroom is a fossil. We say a chapter in a book is a fossil because it is a distinction. If we look at a classroom, it is a distinction of a particular class that belongs to a larger setup of other classes. So it's a distinction of a group of students without a differentiation from the larger body of students. The same thing when we look at a chapter in a book. It's a distinct amount of pages that belong to the larger number of pages in the book. So it's a distinction. The chapter is made a distinction because of its content without a differentiation from the larger contents of the book. فلما فصل طالوت بالجنود قال إن الله مبتليكم بنهر when طالوت went off with this distinctive group of troops without it being differentiated from the larger group of people called Bani Israel. فَلَمَّا فَصَلَ طَالُوتُ بِالْجُنُودِ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبْتَلِيكُمْ بِنَهَرِ So now these troops have become a segment of themselves away from the people that they belong to. At that point, Talut said to them, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبْتَلِيكُمْ بِنَهَرِ Indeed, rest assured, I assure you, Allah is going to test you concerning a river. Which means, we're on our way now, Talut is saying to his uh, soldiers, we're on our way now, but... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test you concerning a river that we are going to come across as we move on. فَمَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهُ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي وَمَنْ لَمْ يَطْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي إِلَّا مَنْ اغْتَرَفَ غُرْفَةً بِيَدَهُ This is what Talut, the commander-in-chief of this, let's call it a squadron or a battalion of troops, he says to them that Allah is going to... Um, is going to test you. Remember, mubtalikum ibtila. Ibtila simply means test. It's not like in the some cultural mind, some um, negative or a test that is going to have 
bad results, harmful results. A test can have positive results, it can have negative results, it can have beneficial results, it can have harmful results or disadvantageous results. It could go both ways. Now he's telling them, Whoever is going to drink from that river does not belong to me. And whoever does not, literally speaking, and whoever does not feed that river belongs to me. Except for someone, except for he, except for any person among you who just takes a handful of water into his mouth. Okay, let's let's clear the, the language part of this. We notice in this ayah the the wording of the ayah Faman Shariba Minhu Falaysa Minni. Whoever drinks, this is what almost literally what the ayah is, uh, Talut is saying to his troops, remember they're on a military journey here. And the worldly mind would think that, wait a minute here, we're going to get thirsty and we're going to come across a river. And what is he telling us? Okay, we'll get to this this lesson before we clear the, the linguistic part of this. What I want to bring to your attention as far as the wording of this ayah is concerned is he is saying, Whoever drinks from this river doesn't belong to me. You're no, you're no longer part of this effort. And then here, here's where I want you to pay close attention. And whoever does not feed this river, then they belong to me. He belongs to me. We, we're together and we, we stay together. The ayah was not worded, uh, to begin with, the, the ayah says, these are Talut's words. Whoever drinks from it, doesn't. it no longer belongs to me in this military effort. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَطْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي And whoever does not feed the river. The, uh, Talut could have, and this is the way the, um, let's say, the fast lane mind, this is the way it thinks. You'd question, you'd say, why didn't Talut say, as a continuation, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَشْرَبْ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي And whoever does not drink from it belongs to me. The If we were to use a logical mind, strictly a physically, a, 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 a mind that is in influenced by the material and physical world. That type of mind would be reading this sentence in this area and said, and it would question, the first thing it would do, the question says, why didn't Talut say, but whoever does not drink from that river belongs to me. He said, and whoever does not feed that river. Here is the subtlety that I hope I can explain and I hope likewise that you can understand. 
He says, and whoever does not feed that river, the fine point here is that these are troops who are on a military mission. And whoever, uh, Talut is telling them, whoever abstains from drinking, whoever, in the first instance, whoever drinks from that river to satisfy their bodily and physical thirst doesn't belong to me. And whoever does not feed that river so here we have two forces pulling in two different directions. The first force is our physical thirst that demands to drink from that river. The other force is the worldly force that wants to have you consumed in it and that's the flowing river so you either drink from that river this is these are the two choices you have this is the test that Allah is presenting you with you either drink from that river and you satisfy your worldly needs or you abstain from feeding into the consumption of the world, the, consum the way the world consumes you. The river here represents <clears throat> your surrender to what is worldly. That's why the wording is, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَطْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي Whoever doesn't feed it. Because it, it, this is no longer, <clears throat> this is where, if we just take a moment, cool down a little, give this some of our thinking power, and let us understand that either we, satisfy the world in us by drinking that's part of our physical world we are not only physical bodies we are much more than that so either we satisfy our physical bodies and by doing so succumb to this world and for a final victory we are not expected by Allah and by a commander appointed by Allah to succumb to the physical world. Or the other choice would be we restrain ourselves, we discipline ourselves, and we don't give of ourselves to this world. We don't feed this world with our desires وَمَنْ لَمْ يَطْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي إِلَّا إِلَّا مَنِ اغْتَرَفَ غُرْفَةً بِيَدَ Except for, there's a little exception here that is made. If someone wants to scoop just a handful of water and bring it to his mouth and drink, that's all that is permitted. In this exception, this scoop of water, the word ghurfa is a small amount of water that you can hold in the palm of your hand. Ghurfa biyade. So ghurfa is that scoop of water. Gharfa is the act when when you're when you motion your hand to do this scooping, it's called gharfa. So gharfa with a dhamma and the gain is the 
amount is the water itself, the scoop. Gharfa is the scooping, is the motion. And both of these pass as qira'at. إِلَّا مَنِ اغْتَرَفَ غُرْفَةً بِيَدَةً This is the Asim, the one. And then the other one, إِلَّا مَنِ اغْتَرَفَ غَرْفَةً بِيَدَةً Both of these are equally valid. And they give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us due to the, the purpose of qira'at, given us the leeway to expand our thoughts and think about this more uh, uh, closely. This fatha and dhamma at the beginning of such words, the word that probably you are uh, more familiar with is wudu. Then when we prepare for salah, there is wudu. We say a person has performed his wudu. The water that is used for performing al wudu is called wadu. You see the fatha and the dhamma at the beginning of. Anyways, this I this is probably more uh, fun for those who are more into language than uh, than others. So there's another um, uh, fine point here that we should be cognizant of, and that is uh, the. The, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is presenting it to us these this information in these ayat he wants us to understand not to go to extremes because the wording illa mani ghtarafa ghurfatan biyade that could have been out of the picture the ayah could have read فَلَمَّا فَصَلَ طَالُوتُ بِالْجُنُودِ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبْتَلِيكُمْ بِنَهَرِ فَمَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهُ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي وَمَنْ لَمْ يَطْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي And then this exception could have been omitted and says فَشَرِبُوا مِنْهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْهُمْ But he, Allah wanted us to, to be aware of our bodies, because when we go to war, we go to war with our bodies. So our bodies are part of the effort, but they are a minor part of the effort. And that's why you, the body was permitted that little scoop of water. We have, Banu Israel had, we have, another way of understanding we who go off into extremes are the ones who fail the test. So Allah is making, making room for the body. It's not that there is a war between your will and your body. There's a synthesis between your will to fight and the body that's going to be participating in that fight or in that war. So there's no internal war between you and your body. It's just that your body has to be secondary to your will. This is what is being outlined in this area. And then the ayah goes on. فَشَرِبُوا مِنْهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْهُمْ So they all drank from this river except for a few of them. إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْهُمْ After Talut cautioned them, 
after Talut explained to them that this is going to be a test, they didn't care. And they probably, using worldly logic, said to themselves, this is, this is how they, these types, whether it's Bani Israel then or their equivalents in any other chapter in history, they would rationalize this saying, wait a minute here, we're going to a war. And in order for us to perform well in that war, we certainly have to have the robust bodies, the physical strength to participate in a winning war. So what they are doing here by rationalizing their act of disobeying their commander, there's logic in disobedience. But it's not a logic that is in the context of Allah's program. فَشَرِبُوا مِنْهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْهُمْ So now we have a many who drank from the river, disobeyed their commander, and by doing so, disobeyed Allah, except for a few of them. And here, once again, we notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to keep our eyes on the important figures or the important segment of this developing narrative. فَشَرِبُوا مِنْهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْهُمْ فَلَمَّا جَاوَزَهُ هُوَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ And now, when Talut passes this river with those few who are still holding on to their commitment with him, with Talut, فَلَمَّا جَاوَزَهُ هُوَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ قَالُوا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا الْيَوْمَ بِجَالُوتَ وَجُنُودَهِ They said, today we don't have the energy. We don't have what it takes. We don't have the wherewithal. لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا الْيَوْمَ بِجَالُوتَ وَجُنُودَهِ In our confrontation with Jalut, the biblical word that's used usually here is Goliath, we don't stand a chance with Goliath and his army, his troops. قَالَ الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُ اللَّهِ كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةً كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ مَحَ الصَّابِرِينَ So here you have, once they crossed this river, the majority of them who drank from the river, you would think now they would say, we are nourished, we drank whatever our bodies needed to drink of the water from that river. So now we can go on and fight against Jalut and his armed forces. They said, no, we can't. But then... قَالَ الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُ اللَّهِ The response to those who said, no, we don't, we, 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 don't, we don't have what it takes to defeat Jalut, Goliath. قَالَ الَّذِينَ The response to that from those few who still held on, 
to their principled position with Talut, they replied, كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله? How many a times has it occurred that those who were small in number defeated those who were large in numbers by Allah's leave? See, they understood that when they encounter the enemy, it is Allah's will that will carry the day when they are involved within his will. كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله والله مع الصابرين. The last words in this ayah. والله مع الصابرين. And Allah remains with those who persevere in conditions like this, in circumstances that are outlined herein. Now, let us let us uh, regroup the 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 crucial meaning of this ayah. We have, and this is in human nature, it is displayed here by the conduct of Bani Israel, but it is within all of our human nature. When this contingent of troops came across this river, remember they're going to a war, and there is a desire in them because of their human nature and because of the nature of the mission that they are on. There's a desire in them to drink that water. But there is also a direction from Allah there's instructions, military instructions from Allah via his commander Talut to have them understand that they are to put up with and endure the lack of water because that is the first indicator of victory when a person the will of a person overcomes the instinct of a person this is played out in this scenario in front of us. The lesson here is that we should resist our desires, our bodily desires. We should resist and we should endure what we do not desire. We resist what our body is telling us and we endure what our body does not want to do. If we pass this test, we are triumphant. Regardless of what the eventual, and we will get to the eventual military outcome of this whole lesson. We will approach that. 
But before we get to the final military result, we are dealing here with the initial psycho-military result. And that is, are we able to have our God-given determination inside of us stronger than the gravity of our bodies? And when we go on to explain the following ayat, we will find out that as if life, as if the world was created to verify who those few are here, we are, we are trying to visualize who the few are here in the context of this one development. The military nature is very obvious here of it. But then in the world today, as if Allah has created the whole world that we are living in to test us on the grounds, on the basic grounds, on the foundations, the mental and psychological foundations that make us who we are in our relationship to Allah, Al-Qawi, Al-Qadir, Al-Muqtadir. كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله Many times our worldly calculations skew our thoughts, take our thoughts in the wrong direction. We think that if we have the numerical superiority, we are triumphant. It's almost, there's a like a, a, a subtle guarantee that flows through our minds that we have, we have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of troops, then oh, the, the, the triumph is almost secured. This, this scenario that we are observing tips that upside down. It says, no, triumph belongs to those even though that they are numerically inferior, there's few of them in numbers, and not many of them in numbers. But the ultimate triumph belongs to them. كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله. والله مع الصابرين. This demands patience and perseverance when all the odds seem to be against you. Now we go on to the following ayah. Even though uh, time frame is a little short here, but we'll begin with the following ayah. وَلَمَّا بَرَزُوا لِجَالُوتَ وَجُنُودِهِ And now, when they are in full view of Jalut and his soldiers, قَالُوا رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا this is when both the few who are committed to Allah being led by Talut and the many who are being led by Jalut and his well-equipped troops 
when both of them came eye to eye at the battlefield just before they engaged in battle, the committed Muslims here from Bani Israel said, Rabbana afrigh alayna sabra. O oh Allah, poor patience, poor. You know, like you're filling up a container with water. They are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill their minds and their hearts and their bodies to fill them up with perseverance, endurance, and patience in this moment. Notice here that a dua, the dua that is expressed is expressed follow, accompanying and following what they are doing. The dua did not come before they set out on this journey. The dua is enmeshed in their action. And now that their, their movement has reached the critical point, then they spoke. And they said, Rabbana afrigh alayna sabr. Oh Allah, fill us with endurance and patience and perseverance. وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا And stabilize. ثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا means fixate our, literally, fixate our feet. Meaning stabilize our steps. Don't have us run away. Don't have us retreat. Don't have us zigzag let our position be stable and concrete wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala alqawm alkafirin and give us victory support and victory over those who are in denial of your authority and power. These, these other people who are on, on Jalut's side, they may have recognized Allah as a creator. There's no information that, uh, that tells us that they were not in acknowledgement of Allah as a mercy giver or Allah as a creator or Allah as a passionate deity, etc. And along with Allah, there are other deities and authorities. This permeates history. But the dua that was expressed by these committed warriors with Talut, وَنْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Give us triumph over a people who are in denial of Allah's power and authority. That means we, the, the adjunct understanding of this is, we stand for Allah's power and authority. We are committed to Allah's power and authority. We are fighting by virtue of Allah's power and authority against all of the others on the other side of the battlefield who dispute Allah's power and authority. Let us learn from these valuable lessons to have Allah in ourselves all the time so that we may, we may be triumphant against our own worldly, our own bodily gravity into the world. Once we accomplish that, 
the rest is a foregone conclusion. Sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa sallallahu ala ma'iyati Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa sallallahu ala itrati Muhammadin wa sallallahu ala muhajiri Muhammad wa sallallahu alladhina hajaru ma'ah wa sallallahu ala nusrati Muhammad alladhina nasaru Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam وسلامه ورحمته وبركاته عليكم